right? Right, let's pray. Right. Um, Father, we, we come before you today, God. We thank you for, Lord, um, the exhortation in your word, Lord, which says, um, Lord, to be sober-minded, Lord, and to, even as we obey the truth, Lord, there is a purifying of the soul that happens, purifying of our mind and will and emotions and imaginations and everything, God. We thank you for that exhortation. And today, Lord, we uh, just come before you, mindful of that, that we will be people who will obey your word, uh, not only learn, study, um, but Lord, obey your word, Father God. We, we, we just pray that you would uh, Lord, empower us to do that. I pray, God, that even today or even right now, Lord, that there will be an empowering, there will be an outpouring of your spirit upon us, Lord, to uh, to move us, Lord, towards that, oh, Father, a greater degree of um, obedience, Master. Yes, Lord, a greater degree of obedience, Father God. Um, yes, Lord, we know that that is also the um, expression of our love for you. And so, Lord, we... We just ask that we will grow in our expression of our love for you uh, in obedience, Lord. Thank you, Father God. Now, let's just take some time to um, you know, think, think about that and ask the Lord, you know, what is it, Lord, that you want me to obey? Uh, what is it that um, maybe you know, I've obeyed partially or uh, kind of neglected um, uh, obeying uh, because of various things, you know, maybe fear, maybe, uh, maybe I, you know, didn't think too much about it, or um, maybe it was um, there was some discomfort involved, you know, being obeying. So um, let's just ask the Lord to reveal that, um, you know, kind to kind of drop that in our hearts, and uh, so that we can make a resolve, uh, be resolved, and uh, make a firm decision to obey, um, obey the Lord. So let's uh, let's just take some time to do that. I just think on those lines. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord, you know us better than we know ourselves. If your word says that uh, you. Lord, even before we were formed in our mother's womb, oh God, you knew us and you knit us skillfully, Lord, in our mother's womb, God. So um, you know us, Lord, inside out. Father, we thank you that what you're showing us, what you're revealing uh, us, uh, revealing to us, God, we know that it is something that uh, you've called us, you've invited us to obey and walk in obedience. And so, God, we, we choose to do that this morning, God. We thank you. We thank you. We come at this time into your mighty hands. We give you all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' matchless name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. Okay, so we'll uh, we'll get started with um, uh, today's class. And today, I just want to share a little bit about um, uh, about the application part of it. We, we looked at it, of course. Um, but to, um, you know, we know that uh, when we look at scripture, we are reading scripture that was written at a different time and a different, um, you know, context, a different culture and so on. So that is why we 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 looked at um, interpretation, hermeneutics, like a, a refreshing, um, a, a refresher on the uh, principles of hermeneutics or principles of interpretation, uh, even before we went into the expression or the uh, proclamation of the truth, right? The interpretation of it um, is something very, very important. So, um, so today let's just look at you know when we talk about uh, when we talk about concluding the message, when we talk about uh, you know at the uh, sharing the application um, uh, of of the truth that you shared and how people should put in place uh, the application of the truth. So it's, it's important to um, bear in mind uh, these three simple things um, that, um, uh, and it's good for us to, you know, uh, be mindful of that, even as we uh, lead people or, uh, you know, share scripture and then say, okay, this is what you need to, this is how we can apply this, like the truth of uh, what we shared. So, um, so one of the things that we need to understand is that, um, you know, I'm on uh, page 37, 
which is uh, which is the second part of uh, leading people to respond right page 37 so um, the one of the things that we need to understand is that uh, there should be a there should not be a change in the interpretation of the text right uh, when it comes to application because of the application uh, there should not be a change in interpretation okay in, in other words when when we uh, say when we uh, teach about, okay, uh, this is how you apply, then the scripture, uh, which is really the foundation for that, for that application, you know, you're pointing to scripture and you're saying that, you know, this is what God's word says. So therefore um, you do so, right? So that scripture, you know, should not be adjusted or, um, you know, made flexible or changed to suit the application. Okay, so that's uh, very, very important, right? So I remember watching a <clears throat> comic, I mean, reading a comic of Dennis the Menace. Um, I don't know, some of you may be uh, very popular um, in those days, uh, Dennis the Menace. So Dennis is having a conversation with his friend, Joey, and um, they are putting together um, a jigsaw puzzle. So, you know, several pieces and they are putting it together. And so uh, Dennis is, you know, leaning on one, uh, you know, one piece, like he's really putting it. So Joey says, you know, are you sure it's supposed to do that? You no, know, are you sure, sure it's supposed to fit there? Um, but then uh, Dennis says, you know, I'm sure it will, you know, when you when you lean on it hard enough, it will fit. Right. So uh, his, uh, yeah, so the thing is that we, we should not really do that. We should not lean on something hard enough so it fits the, you know, the scripture fits the application. Uh, rather, it should be the other way around, where the interpretation, uh, from the interpretation, should flow the application, right? So that's first. Uh, that's the first thing. Um, like for example, if you can look at um, certain uh, scriptures, like, um, uh, let's look at, uh, you know, uh, uh, okay, so let's look at 2 Corinthians 9 and verse 6. Okay, let's turn there, Second Corinthians 9 and verse 6. Okay, okay so um, several scriptures here, Second Corinthians 9, 6 to 11, talks about sowing and reaping. Uh, Galatians 6, 6 to 10, um, again, uh, <clears throat> uh, maybe you can look at that also, 6 to 10, talks about how um, one can share uh, in all good things with him who teaches the word, okay? Uh, and then goes on to say, do not be deceived. God is not mocked for whatever a man sows that he will also reap, okay? So here also, Second Corinthians 9 and verse 6, he who sows um, sparingly will also reap sparingly. He who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. So uh, the, another scripture is Gal uh, Colossians 3.25. Right? Uh, maybe we'll just read that also, Colossians 3 and uh, verse 25. Um, okay, so whatever you do, do it heartily as to the Lord, not to men, 3.23. 24, knowing that from the Lord you will receive the reward of the inheritance, for you serve the Lord Christ. Um, but he who does wrong will be repaid for what he has done, and there is no partiality. Okay, so now all three of these uh, scriptures cannot be treated on the same plane, and uh, with the principle that what you do, you will get back. You know, and we can't use it to um, describe sinning. Right? Uh, the this is how. Uh, this is when you sin, you will reap the consequences of sin, which we know to be true, right? Which we know that there are consequences. Yes, uh, when we when we sin, there are consequences in the natural. There are consequences uh, relationally, you know, spiritually. Uh, there are consequences and so on. And and grace covers that. When we go back to Him, there is the restoration. But we know that there are consequences. But however, these scriptures are not referring to that this colossians 3 25 there is a more of more of a direct reference uh, but these scriptures when it talks about sowing and reaping is not uh, talking about uh, you know sowing to the flesh or committing a sinful act and uh, reaping the consequences of it right so um, we cannot use 
this text in order to explain um, you know that principle of uh, uh, consequences of sin or um, you know what happens uh, when we open our lives to sin or living a sinful lifestyle we cannot use this in order to um, uh, you know give that application right so that's uh, that's the thing so that's like a forced interpretation where where we you know force the uh, text into the application so we need to avoid that right um, then the other thing secondly uh, what we see is that if the um, text is uh, is a particular, uh, you know, is talking about a certain um, certain truth and uh, application of a certain truth. Now, if we want to use it for a slightly wider context, okay, slightly um, a, a different scope, you know. Uh, for example, even this very scripture, if you want to talk about sowing and reaping and the consequences of that, then there needs to be additional text, additional scripture uh, to support that. Okay? And also we need to explain and say, you know, there is this principle, you know, there is a sowing and reaping principle um, and, and then explain what is in direct, um, what is directly um, in connection with the, that particular application like for example um you know if we take 1 corinthians 6 and verse 19 um, just going back 1 corinthians 6 um we see that um, 1 corinthians 6 talks about how our body is the temple of the holy spirit right the verses before that talk about how one needs to flee sexual immorality so our body is the temple of the holy spirit how can you know you make your body as a part of um, someone uh, you know is, is referring to a harlot and uh, you know how can you be part of that how can you be one flesh with that person and uh, because your body is the temple of the holy spirit okay so now now that's the context that's the context in which uh, this, this particular scripture is um, you know used referred to now yes we can have a wider application Right. For example, you know, if you're using abusive uh, substances, substance abuse, right? maybe drugs or alcohol or uh, you know, uh, tobacco, cigarettes, and you know, something that uh, damages the body, okay? something that causes uh, health, um, uh, you know, uh, damage damage to health. Right? So, um, can we use that scripture? Yes, we can, but we need to go beyond this and explain. Right. Uh, so, um, yes, the uh, Holy Spirit is uh, dwelling in us and uh, we need to glorify God in our body. Um, but we need to go beyond that and explain uh, how the body that has been created to glorify God, you know, we are actually damaging it and uh, how we will not be able to fulfill the plan and purpose of God in doing so uh, and so on. Right. And and also, you know, wider explanation of how we can be a, a bad example to someone who is weaker in faith and uh, you know not only our uh, faith is compromised or our walk is compromised but also the uh, the, the life the believer who is weaker we're not setting a good example and we are being a stumbling block for that person as well okay so so there needs to be um, uh, an explanation and uh, other suitable scripture uh, to be uh, to be given uh, and to be um, you know to to be explained and to be shared right so um, so it's an interesting exercise uh, page 37 you can go through that and um, you know uh, and and see what is what is as actually applicable okay what is applicable what is not applicable you know one extreme example is 1 Corinthians 7 and verse 24 um, verse 24 uh, you know, it says, brethren, let each one remain with God in that state in which he was called. Okay. Um, now, if you look at the context, it talks about, uh, you know, it talks about uh, what the person was doing, whether, whether the person was, uh, um, I, I think we, we, we looked at this on an earlier occasion during the mentoring session, was the person a slave um, and, uh, you know, which was there during those days, uh, circumcised, uncircumcised and all those things. And then he goes on to say, you know, brethren, let each one remain with God in that state in which he was called. 
Okay, so uh, if you use that to say, okay, uh, you know, remain in that same place or in a geographical location, it's an extreme example. Of course, we understand that it doesn't uh, refer to that, but uh, you know, we need to avoid such um, such connections or such applications of the truth. You know, it's um, now like we might say, uh, you know, who would do that, right? Who would uh, who would in the right mind actually teach something like that, but but we see that it is possible, right? It is possible to draw such uh, extreme connections and say, you know, this is what the scripture says, and therefore you go do it, right? Um, uh, so, so that's the thing. Uh, we need to be careful. Um, uh, so that's the second one. The third thing is uh, we read a scripture, and that na narrative, you know, there is an example there that cannot be. Uh, applied uh, unless it is backed by precept or principle. Okay, so what do we mean by that? Right. Uh, for example, if you look at um, Acts chapter 14 and verse 23, it talks about you know, Paul's uh, first missionary journey or second missionary journey where he goes and appoints elders in every place. Okay, so, so uh, which is um, a healthy, uh, a scriptural example of leadership in the church and so on. So, uh, so plurality of leadership, meaning uh, you know where you have uh, many pillars or many leaders in the church, there which is accountability and so on. So that is something which is um, you know which we can uh, which we where we look at the model in the church, model in the uh, uh, New Testament church, and we can use that right. We can use that as an application. Whereas if you look at Acts chapter one. And verse four. Okay, now that is actually used many times. Acts chapter one and verse four, where uh, the Lord says, um, "You know, tarry in Jerusalem." He, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father. Acts chapter one, verse four. Uh, I'm following the notes, and this is uh, page thirty-eight. Okay, so Acts chapter one and verse four, where the Lord. Uh, ask the disciples to wait in Jerusalem, or the old English is tarry in Jerusalem, um, till you are, till you, you know, uh, to tell you, till you are filled with the power on high. You know, wait for the promise of the Father. Okay. Uh, a couple of other verses, uh, thirteen, verse thirteen, and when they had entered, they went up to the upper room where they were staying. And verse 13 and then verse 14 says, These all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication with the men and the and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brothers. Okay, so we see um, uh, all these uh, scriptures. So they are waiting and uh, uh, to be filled with, the, uh, with what the promise of the Father, which the Lord Jesus uh, told them in obedience to the Lord. Now that has been used many times to tarry or to wait uh, to be filled with the Spirit of God. Now, to be baptized with or baptized in the Holy Spirit, one needs to wait. Okay, one needs to tarry. Now, we know that there is value in waiting on the Lord. There is value in spending time in His presence um, and spending uh, extended times in prayer and so on. Now, all that is valid. Right? But when we say, when we teach, and uh, when we take the scripture and say, therefore, one needs to wait or tarry to be baptized in the spirit. Right? So that was the, um, you know, when the early charismatic move or Pentecostal uh, teaching, you know, this was uh, something which was very prevalent that you need to wait, you need to tarry, you know, maybe one day, two days, three days, uh, and only then will the Lord uh, fill you or baptize you with the Spirit, okay. uh, which is not true, because when you read the rest of Scripture, we see uh, right there in the book of Acts um, that people were filled, right? We, we studied uh, Acts chapter 8, Acts chapter uh, 10, and so on, where Peter and John go, they lay hands, people are filled. Cornelius' house, Peter is speaking, and uh, they are listening, and they are filled with the Spirit. Ananias goes, lays hands on Paul. Um, he is he is baptized. It says, so we know that um, uh, you know that is 
that is, uh, you know, even even in the same book, it is, uh, you know, we see several instances. So, um, so, you know, the application, uh, he, we cannot um, take that and then impose it and then, and then teach saying, you know, this is what happened. Therefore, one needs to tarry. Okay. Um, there are other examples, and I think which are uh, very, um, you know, uh, which, which will give us uh, uh, understanding. Okay, how not to apply um, the truth of scripture. Okay, uh, and take it out of context. So, um, application, while it is very, very um, valid, very useful, and um, absolutely important, uh, because a person. Uh, goes back and the person has something to uh, to do to carry out in simple steps so that the truth what he or she has heard uh, becomes a reality in their lives you know they are not only hearing it but they are now going to do the truth or um, walk in the truth so uh, you know sharing that application is very important but it will create more damage when we share it if we if our application is out of context if our application is um, you know uh, is forced uh, from uh, a different context right so um, just wanted to share that you can just go through the rest of uh, scripture it's very interesting all those examples which are uh, which are given there okay so uh, we'll stop here and probably we can look at uh, a couple of uh, presentations. We can listen to a couple of rep presentations. Um, before that, just wanted to share uh, about Say's um, uh, uh, presentation. Uh, I'm a sermon presentation last class. Um, so Say that was uh, that was wonderful about kingdom driven, and um, yeah, some some of those. I think um, um, one common theme was uh, was about uh, about wealth, about our heart not being uh, turned towards wealth but uh, towards god i think that was the that was a big picture uh, in what you shared okay um i i just uh, like you know i shared in the last class i just felt that if you can be mindful of the time right so that's a very important uh, aspect as well um so you know uh, maybe if you can time yourself or you know put a timer there and say okay by now i, I need to finish i need to wind up um, that will be useful right um yeah. Any any other thoughts? Uh, does um, uh, say you have any any uh, thoughts on your presentation? Oh, thank thank you, Pastor, for the feedback. Uh, well taken. Um, for me, um, yeah. when you told us to make a presentation or prepare for something, I was just searching within, you know, to know. Mm. Holy Spirit, what do I do? And that was um, the direction I was led. Um, the subject about the kingdom has been something, it's been a journey, basically. I'm still learning a lot. Um, mm. But the way I see things, the way I, I think that the next move of God, basically, it's all going to communicate into just us focusing, being kingdom focused and seeing everything from a kingdom perspective. That's, that's kind of where I, I see things in a way based on my learnings, you know, and all that. So it's, so what I feel basically is just like things I'm learning and I have learned um, over time. And so uh, I think, it, I think this is something um that will give our Christianity, our journey, it, um, it will put things in perspective, knowing mm. that uh, we're not just here um, for ourselves and that um, we, have, we have an assignment here to be representatives, true citizens of the kingdom and to bring forth the kingdom in our world today. Yeah. So mm. this, this is the kind of things that, you know, I've been learning and, things that have been going through my mind and the things the Holy Spirit has been teaching me directly from scriptures and from other right. men of God also. Right. right. Thank you. Yeah. Does anyone else have any thoughts on uh, uh, Say's uh, sermon presentation? Some practical things. Uh, you can even share, you know, some things like, okay, maybe this could have helped um, you 
receive it a little better. Uh, what could have been helpful? You can share that also. Um, so say you had a PowerPoint presentation that was that was good that helped, and uh, um, he put mainly scriptures there. Yeah, okay, so Tarun says, okay, content was rich and compelling um, pointers. Okay, long sentences that started with, I would like to say that, I usually say this. Okay, yeah, that could be cut short, especially, um, uh, I think that's a good valid point, Tarun, because uh, especially since uh, we're looking at 12 minutes, so then, uh, you know, that would, um, that would, um, that would really help. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, what I felt was there's so much of passion, so much of conviction in, uh, say, is, um, uh, yeah, like you said, compelling pointers. Yeah. So uh, in whatever, say, shared, um, so that, that was, that really came through, even though we couldn't see, say, um, uh, but uh, that came through. That was good. Yeah. Kennedy says, okay, it was captivating. Wonderful. Yeah. Um, and also say, I'm, I'm sure, you know, 12 minutes, there's only so much you can do. Um, and uh, there was one practical application, of course, which you, which you said was, you know, uh, about wealth and that over and over again. But if, they were, if there were like maybe two or three other ways by which, um, you know, when I go back, um, uh, when I think about the rule, on, rule and uh, reign of God over my life, you know, money, money is one, uh, maybe it's another area. Uh, maybe a third area, um, some practical things, I think that would be uh, helpful as well. Yeah. So Charles says time had been invested. Um, okay. Okay. So who would like to uh, share next? Um, probably we'll have time for two more, I think, or maybe one, one more. Uh, um, whoever wants to share, uh, if you're ready, you can go ahead and uh, share. Um, yeah, all yours. Anyone? You can just put your hand up and then you can share. Um, okay, I think it was uh, Felix who shall suggested a sh schedule. Maybe we should, I think I can see the value in that. If I put that up, uh, you know, maybe uh, things will move a little quicker, right? Uh, what do you think, guys? Because my my only uh, uh, thing about not putting a schedule is like, if you don't show up, if I put two people, you know, three people you know, on the schedule and if you're not ready and then you don't, uh, you know, show up for a class, then that'll be a bad scene, right? Because others won't be ready. So that's why I was against putting a schedule. But then if uh, if nobody's coming prepared, then it's, a, it's a, you know, it's again a bad thing. So um, anyone, anyone, if you're prepared, uh, you can go ahead. Uh, okay, Tarun, Tarun and Charles. Okay, so we'll, uh, I just, I saw Tarun's here in the chat. So, okay. So. Uh, I, I, I was not going to share, but to okay. suggest that we have a schedule. Okay. You know, human beings sometimes we want to work uh, toward mm -hmm. the deadline. Mm -hmm. So sometimes when such thing is set, we mm -hmm. would work. I remember when we were doing the the New Testament survey, a schedule was put up, and we knew we were to present on this time, and then we were able to do it when we were doing it with the, okay. the, the lady. Yeah. Right. Sure. Sure. Awesome. Okay. We'll do that then. So we already have two names for Friday. Um, uh, that is uh, Sam and uh, Mangi. Okay. Sam and Mangi, you guys are on f uh, for Friday. Um, Beth, uh, um, Beth also maybe you can um, uh, share on Friday. So we'll have three names, Beth, Mangi, and uh, so I'll put that in the schedule, uh, Mangi and Sam. Beth, I hope that's okay if you can share on Friday. Right. So today, I know uh, things are a little noisy at home. Okay, Susan is also ready. Okay, so that will be next. Okay, so Tarun, um, yeah, please go ahead. Um, you can share. Fine, Pastor. I'll just share the presentation and then I can go ahead. Uh... Yes. 
Uh, does it show up in the full screen mode or? It's in the PowerPoint mode. I mean, as in your, it's not the presenter. It's uh, not as a presentation. Yeah, I can see the uh, other slides also. On the side. Now, uh, is it? Mm, no. The... Uh, yeah, just... Okay, I think. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah. It's uh, that's how it does. Yeah. Good. Okay. Uh, so the topic that I have picked up is uh, ears of the spirit, hearing from God. Uh, when we look at the uh, Bible initially, in uh, right from Genesis, uh, we see that uh, God is a God who speaks. Uh, it's quite interesting to note that um, even before there was atmosphere that was created, even before uh, we had the lungs, the sound that existed, uh, Bible says God said. Uh, God was uh, speaking even before uh, the very signs of sound that we know. Uh, because uh, sound for us, if we ask a physician, it is just a vibration uh, of things that allows us to uh, hear something. But that would be more of a uh, carnal input uh, that we have. Uh, for example, uh, we we think hearing is only uh, based on uh, what we can hear through our ears, but for God, it is much beyond that. Uh, humans actually can hear from 20 to 20,000 hertz. That's the uh, frequency range of hearing of humans. Uh, but the uh, sound exists much beyond that. If you see uh, animals, uh, there are bats which can hear uh, frequencies that are much sharper, uh, the ultrasonic frequencies, and then you have these whales that can uh, hear infrasonic frequencies. Uh, so for various animals uh, itself, the uh, hearing changes. Likewise, if we see the stars out in the sky, uh, uh, while humans can hear only 20,000 hertz, there are stars that can actually produce sounds uh, which are up to uh, some trillions of hertz. Uh, but the only reason we don't hear this is because the face is the space is fully uh, uh, it, it's it's vacuum. It's not filled with anything, and uh, sound doesn't travel uh, in vacuum. Uh, but the star is making that sound out there. Uh, we we can literally say that the star is singing at a uh, volume that only God can uh, hear. So with with this kept in mind, uh, we, you know, uh, you know, even the stars are recognized by the light patterns that they have. They are all unique, and they all have their own frequencies. And God is the creator of all, and He can hear all these things, and He can also speak to uh, all these things. God is not just a God of the humans, but He is a God of uh, all creation. And uh, uh, with that kept in mind, if we if we try to explore. Uh, hearing from God, there are many ways that God speaks to us. Uh, a human body is made with uh, spirit, soul, and body, and uh, 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 it it is a spirit uh, through which that we connect with God. So one of the ways that God speaks uh, uh, that we learn from the Bible is the stirring within the heart. Um, although we don't uh, audibly hear anything, uh, there are times that we strongly feel that uh, we have to do something or we get burdened or stirred up by something. A good example that we have from the scripture is uh, from Nehemiah. Uh, when the uh, wall of the Jerusalem was uh, uh, taken down and when the gates were burnt, uh, the news comes to uh, the people um, who belong to Jerusalem. And well, uh, when the news comes, uh, we see that Nehemiah has wept. Uh, sometimes there are certain things that actually make us stirred up so much uh, that it, uh, either we we cry about it or either we get um, uh, really agitated, angry about it. Uh, it that that's a uh, that's a stirring within the heart. And when Nehemiah wept, uh, that actually turned into a vision 
for his life to build the walls back up and that that has driven him uh, all his uh, life to just pursue this and go and build the walls back up likewise uh, we have the leading of the spirit it could be uh, the creation when you when you just walk out and uh, see something uh, you get stirred up at heart uh, to see how fascinating and you you discover the wonder and then you recognize the god behind uh, so it's uh, the stirring of the heart is one of the ways that god speaks to us god has literally chosen to speak to us uh, to leave so much wonder behind so that we we look at things and get to listen from him on how great he is and how how he cares for us uh, the word care in the, in the scripture it literally means that uh, anticipating what you need and providing for it much ahead uh, it's like you care for your child because you're you're already preparing the lunch and dinner before even he asks for it and that's how god has prepared things and kept for it and looking at that uh, our hearts can relate to the creator uh, who has uh, who has left all these evidences around us uh, the next way that god speaks to us is through prophecy and counsel this is a very famous um, uh, way that we can easily relate to uh, because uh, prophecy is something that we, we see in the old testament there are about 600 plus prophecies about uh, messiah and uh, about 350 of them they have traced that uh, Jesus Christ has already fulfilled in his first coming. And there are more which are yet to be fulfilled in his second coming. Uh, this is a way that God has chosen to speak, which is, uh, which is prophecy uh, that has been written in the word. And also there is a lot of instruction that has been written in the word through which God has chosen to speak with us. Uh, for example, in 1 Corinthians, it talks about uh, 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 marriage and then... Uh, you have instruction about how to how to be a good husband how to be a good wife and this is this can be considered as a good counsel from the word that we uh, we hear from uh, god the word of god is uh, uh, god himself the more we understand the word the more we grow closer to the nature of god uh, which allows us to uh, stay aligned with his nature and uh, that's how we hear more from god it, it is it it will help us tune ourselves to hear the shepherd's voice uh, the next part next way that god has chosen to speak with us is through circumstances times and seasons um, in fact uh, god could have directly appeared to uh, pharaoh and spoken to him but instead he has chosen to speak to him through the circumstances uh, he has created uh, and allowed these plagues uh, before he sent Moses. And likewise, there was a famine that was sent um, before Joseph went and uh, solved that famine. And this is a circumstance that, uh, that God has allowed uh, before he has used one of his men to show his glory. Uh, likewise, we see there was a Goliath that was sent uh, who uh, caused the fear and then uh, then comes uh, David who took down that uh, Goliath uh, showing up uh, how great God is uh, likewise uh, you know the greatest uh, uh, evangelistic sermon of Jonah it was just a one-liner but it it has brought down uh, the entire Assyrians of 1,20,000 people into their knees uh, before, because there are so many things that happened uh, which are all uh, uh, indicating the circumstances, times and seasons in Nineveh. Uh, we see that the Assyrians went through two plagues, an earthquake, a solar eclipse, and there was a, a military tear down. Uh, with all these things happening, uh, God sends Jonah, and then Jonah just have to preach one line, and then people, people see God through the circumstances, times and seasons uh, in, in, that, uh, in, in the book of uh, Jonah. So it, it's interesting to note God says Nebuchadnezzar is uh, the king of Babylon is my servant and Cyrus he is my shepherd. Uh, although these are uh, very notorious uh, kings who have uh, conquered uh, kingdoms and they've ruled over the world, uh, God is saying that he has he's the one who has appointed them. So if you are if we are in a, in a uh, circumstance or if you are in a 
a time or a season that we don't understand we should just look up and see how uh, what is it that god is talking to us what is it that god wants us to uh, stand up and do uh, that glorifies his name how he would want to use us as a channel in a circumstance like this the next thing that uh, the last uh, a point that i would want to bring up is dreams and visions i've put up a overwhelming list of scriptures uh, but i just wanted to make one point out here uh, god has been speaking to his people in dreams and visions all through the scriptures right from genesis all through uh, revelations the entire book of revelations is a vision uh, that was given to uh, john and likewise uh, uh, we don't understand things unless uh, uh, it is shown us shown to us in visions because there is a lot that can be communicated through a vision for example uh, moses and john have uh, written uh, genesis and revelations which is totally based on a vision there is no one that has existed while the creation account was happening uh, no one is yet to uh, yet reached the revelations uh, part but we still understand these things because there is a lot that can be communicated in a very time, short uh, time span uh, through a dream or a vision and that's one of the communication modes god has chosen to use uh, to interact with us uh, uh, if if a word is spoken we will relate to the uh, meaning that we already know but if it is a dream or a vision uh, that uh, directly connects with the spirit and there is a lot that is understood uh, by a simple vision or a, a dream that we uh, see and God has chosen to uh, speak to us like that. We have seen interpretation of dream, uh, dreams as a gift uh, that is given to a lot of people in the Bible and uh, it's, it's a way that God has chosen to communicate with us. So th these are different ways that when we open up uh, and try to listen to God in various ways, we can listen to God through the circumstances, through the stirring within the heart, through the dreams and visions. It it's more like uh, tuning beyond the 20,000 hertz that we can hear. It's, it's tuning beyond and trying to uh, listen to God with the spiritual ear that he has blessed us with. Uh, so that's what I would want to say and we uh, i just pray that uh, uh, we open up and start hearing from god in all these ways and stay sensitive to it thank you thank you Tarun. that was wonderful wow i think uh, that was a well-researched um, uh, message uh, so many um, so much of scripture and i think um, a lot of uh, uh, other sources also. So, um, any particular source that you went to to um, uh, research, you know, especially about the science part of it, and also about uh, it was interesting to see Jonah, the the Assyrian, um, you know, uh, thing. So, uh. Uh, yeah, Pastor. In fact, uh, there's a lot of content uh, on uh, NASA nasa.gov um, that mm. it talks about there's so many stars uh, the vibrations and uh, there are literally you can listen to youtube videos but um, yeah uh, in 12 minutes i have chosen not to play a video but you can mm. listen to the stars that they yeah. are tuned into uh, human ears and stuff it's it's fascinating mm. to just understand how god god partitioned everything right right yeah, so um yeah I, I, that's those are some of my observations it was well researched and um well presented as well within those 12 minutes i think this sermon title and some of the topic uh, of course uh, requires a lot more time where we can um, you know we, we can spend a lot of time taking in receiving uh, you know and looking at each of these things uh, and i think each of these points are a sermon by itself right um, especially when you say, okay, uh, prophecy and counsel. Um, so, you know, lo looking at that itself, that's a, you know, that's a full sermon. So, yeah, so that was good. Um, oh, j just one suggestion. I, I just felt that maybe uh, the use of the word carnal when you started off, maybe uh, physical would help. I know carnal is also fleshly and, uh, you know, physical as well. So, um, but uh, like, you know, it, when you look at the Greek, it has it, uh, uh, you know, it, it, it talks about the unrenewed mind, the flesh, and so on. So, so that was one thing that I, um, when you looked at, when you said, you know, uh, receiving carnal input, like 
so that's that's when uh, I just thought maybe physical would be a better word there. Um, okay. Um, yeah, and uh, yeah, then the other thing. Um, I know this uh, again. Twelve minutes uh, is a lot. Uh, is a lot less, but uh, um, maybe the uh, you know for the New Testament believer, uh, the New Testament perspective and uh, also the application. You know, so what more? You know, what um, what can I do? Uh, as a, of course, you know when when we present um, uh, God is uh, um, you know God is sovereign God is uh, God speaks to us in these ways but um, you know there are people before the cross there are people after the cross right and then that's one distinction and so in today's day and time you know uh, primary um, the primary way God speaks and then you know but these are all the ways that we can be open to um, I think that uh, and also the application but you know um, what can I do what can I what is that one thing that I can start. I think your your application was to be to be open, to be aware, to be open, to be mindful of. Um, uh, you know, I, I think as a first step to just uh, think about the wonderful ways in which he speaks, uh, even through nature and even through you know all his his creation. Uh, probably that was uh, that one one thing, right? Um, so maybe you can just uh, you know reiterate that and say you know do that next time you take a walk or next time you go for a trek or next time you even read the papers or watch the news you know you get back so uh, so as a person you know uh, uh, for me it'll it'll come back when i see when i see the when i see nature when i so that's what i felt right so um uh, like to to really uh, reiterate the application um, yeah and thank you pastor i i understand that call for action in the yeah, yeah 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 like especially when it comes to these small messages uh which yeah. we can you know which you can put on social media the, the, the application is very very strong right uh, so yes. that that'll help yes okay um your thoughts uh tarun on yeah, like while preparing or yeah i yeah i totally agree to your feedback in fact uh we I could always uh, phrase my sentences uh, to make it uh, much more powerful, the introduction and also the conclusion with a good call for action statement that is repetitive, that stands out after the message as well. Mm -hmm. I think I failed to uh, put that together. But uh, uh, otherwise, yes, I was trying to uh, keep up the time and uh, <laughs> that challenged me to compress many things. It's, I know. Uh, it's a challenge yeah. to let go of the content. <laughs> Mm. It's, like, yeah, it's a good yeah. challenge to work with. Right. Wonderful. Um, yeah. Uh, I think, uh, yeah, here are some comments on the chat. So, um, so that's uh, good. A any other thoughts that you guys have? Uh, you know, you can, you can share as well. Yeah, of course, you can put it on the groups and then I think that's good. Thank you. Thanks. Um, so blessed to hear that. And, uh, and a very good reminder that God is speaking. Uh, and, the, and the fact that, you know, he it's, it's not like after creation, he started speaking and even before that, I think that was, a, for me, that was a takeaway. That was an eye opener for me. Yeah. And um, I think one more thing that I put down. Um, yeah. Uh, about care, you know? Um, um, about anticipating and providing the anticipation aspect of it, uh, you know, as a father, I I understand. And I'm sure you do as well. So that was that was beautiful, you know, the uh, the God who speaks, the God who cares, uh, in anticipating and providing for our needs. That was wonderful as well. Awesome. Okay. So I think that was good. Thank you so much. Uh, have a great day. We will catch up on Friday. So Friday, we have the names already. So we have Mangie, Sam, and Susan uh, to share with us. Uh, I'll put it on the, uh, I'll put up the schedule as well. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much. God bless. See you guys. Bye-bye. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Bye-bye.